Konnichiwa sa mga Yuki Jins! This is Miyuki. Thank you for clicking this video. Today we are reacting to Geography Now Japan made by Geography Now. It was requested by one of our Yuki Jins, so thank you so much. It was made around 2017, but yeah, we're gonna watch it now because... Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, if you enjoy Japan-related memes, please don't forget to join our subreddit. I'll put the link in the description. Alright, let's start. I'm kind of excited because I love this stuff. This is one country I barely have to introduce you to. Let's just get it over with. Sushi, geishas, karate, temples, ramen, anime, sumo's weird stuff, weird cosplay, poison weird fish, cosplay. and I'm not even gonna ask about that. <laughs> Dewa, ikimashou! Ikimashou! Woohoo! to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. We have reached the land Konnichiwa. of the rising sun, Asia's island powerhouse, and home to a culture that I'm sure you've heard of. Let's just jump into it. Ah, Japan, you have such a story behind you. First of all, Japan is located right off the east coast of the Asian continent between the Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Japan, stretching all the way from the Sea of Okhotsk in the north with the East China Sea to the south. The country is divided into 47 prefectures, each with incredibly uh -huh. beautifully minimalistic style flags. The prefectures are divided into four different categories, Ken, To, Fu, Ten. and Do. The first level, Ken, <laughs> Ken, the first of the 43 plain prefectures. Then you have To, which means something like metropolis, and this yes. category only applies to Tokyo City. By the way, Tokyo literally means East Metropolis. But before that, the capital city was Kyoto, and Kyo also means uh, metropolis. And it's kind of confusing because the second character of Kyoto, the To, can also read as Miyako, which also means the metropolis. It was in 1869 when they changed the capital city to Tokyo. But the funny thing here is they only made a law which uh, says that Tokyo is the new capital city around 1950, which is very recent. Whereas before Kyoto, it was uh, the capital city for about 1,100 years. So it was political and cultural center of Japan. Fu refers to the urban prefectures, which applies only to the cities of Osaka and Kyoto. And finally, Do, which is a unique category translating to something like circuit, and it applies to all of Hokkaido in the north. Speaking of which, Tokyo, Japan's capital, is the largest city in the world with its greater metropolitan area, including Kanto, mm -hmm. containing about 37 million people. That's more I than the entire here population now. of Canada. However, Tokyo is kind of like 23 smaller cities all smashed into one, divided into units called wards. And the closest thing to a capital one would probably be Chiyoda, where the emperor, prime minister, and supreme mm -hmm. court are located. After the greater Tokyo Kanto region, you have the next largest cities, Osaka and Nagoya, coming in at Yay! third. Keep in mind, about 90% of people in Japan live in cities. And I was born in Nagoya. Kyushu and Kyushu. The busiest airports, of course, being Tokyo's two twins, Haneda, which is actually in Tokyo, and Narita International, which is like an hour and a half drive away outside mm -hmm. of Tokyo. Then you have Osaka's Kansai International. <laughs> Kicks. And Fukuoka International on Kyushu. <laughs> But gotta keep it clean, Keith. Speaking of which, Japan- Wait, we also have big international airport near Nagoya. It's called Chubu Kokusai Kuko. It's called Centra because it's in the middle of Japan. All right, let's go. It's made up of about 6,850 islands, but about 97% of the land is made up of four main islands, Honshu, Kyushu, Shikoku, and Hokkaido. South of the main four, you have the Ryukyu Island chain, mm -hmm. which extends just south of Kyushu, partially making up the Okinawa prefecture. You've probably heard of Okinawa. It's where Uma Thurman got that sword that she used to kill Lucy Liu. It's also where these two islands- <clears throat> Never mind. Nonetheless, Japan can still kind of be separated into 10 historical main regions, six of which divided amongst Honshu. Then you have the interesting, less highlighted Kuro Island dispute with Russia in the north. Mm, Basically, Russia and the Northern Island. Island but Japan claims these two islands closest to Hokkaido, Iturup or Etorofuto, and Kunashir mm -hmm. or Kunashiri, which is only like less than 10 miles away from Hokkaido. On a clear day, you can even see it from the coast, but it's like, nope, Russia. They even have a statue of Lenin. The so in that Northern Island, they have uh, different resources, such as geothermal resources and mineral resources which I guess both country wants it. Russians and Japanese have kind of had a long dispute over this area. At one point, mm -hmm. Japan even tried to take over all of Sakhalin in the 1800s. Then you have the Dokdo Takashima Island dispute between yeah. them and South Korea. To the and that island, they have mainly fishery resources. See, South Korea has a patrol building built on the island and they fiercely guard it. And finally, you have Okino Torishima, which is probably the loneliest place in Japan as a shallow reef in the middle of the ocean. It looks like it's trying so hard to become mm -hmm. an island complete with three helipads so and a research tiny. station. There's no diplomatic dispute, but rather a dispute within the UN. Mm -hmm. 
mm. on whether or not it qualifies as land for an exclusive economic zone in the ocean. Phew, okay, all right, that kind of took forever. Well, if you're interested to Japanese territory uh, topics, uh, I think you can learn a lot from uh, Japanese uh, Gaimusha's uh, homepage. I'll put the link in the description so you can see their point of view and I think they explain it in different uh, languages, so take a look. Getting around to Japan is incredibly easy, often touted as having the best public transportation system in the world. They have highways and trains everywhere, even one that cuts through an office building, as well as the Shinkansen yeah. bullet train system that can get you to virtually every corner of Honshu and Kyushu, as well as the bottom tip of Hokkaido, but it's not Shikoku. Best. If you want to go to Shikoku, you have to take the slower local Seto Ohashi line across the Seto Bridge. Yeah, Shikoku mm -hmm. is kind of like the runt of the litter in Japan. Wait, Nani! <laughs> Shikoku is kind of like the runt of the litter in Japan. Shikoku is kind of like the runt of the litter in Japan. Yes, I'm not gonna lie, Shikoku is pretty rural in Japan, but there are so many beautiful, amazing things and places, foods in Shikoku. I know that because my dad is from Shikoku, he's from Ehime, famous for mikan. If you haven't tried the pon juice, which is the best orange juice from Ehime, then I don't know what to say, barb song. It is so good that a metal rock band made a song about it. in Matsuyama, they have Dogo Onsen, which is one of the famous and oldest onsen in Japan. And the imperial family always visits there. Kochi Prefecture has the best udon. I think the best way to go there is by car. If you love nature, you're gonna love it. And if you love driving, it's just so beautiful. You see the beautiful endless coastline and the mountains and islands. Also, Shikoku has the last two remaining original Japanese castles in Japan. It is in Kochi and Matsuyama. Also, they have the Shinanto River, which is the cleanest and clearest river in Japan. And it's the last natural river in Japan. So I don't know if it makes sense, but I want to think Shikoku as the last Japan in Japan. <laughs> what? Anyways, you gotta try the Ponjusu someday. Basically, Japan is like one big massive machine constantly running and moving with flashing neon lights, vending machines, and robots, and everything. Everything! Even the, the garbage cans have cartoons. Cartoons everywhere. <laughs> anyway, some notable places of interest <laughs> might include Tokyo Sky Tree, the second tallest building in the world, Miyajima Pagoda, Matsumoto, Himeji, and Osaka mm -hmm. castles, the Fushimi Inari. I see many foreigners on Instagram who take pictures in this Torii gates. This Torii that you see in this video, this were uh, colored painted red because it is uh, believed to keep the evils away and these were devoted as a means of prayers for their wish so if you make a wish when you pass the gates they say that you'll get good luck i would love to go there again for an instagram picture <laughs> Shrine, the Great Buddha Hall, Nakagin Capsule Tower, the Vine Bridges of Ia Valley, the Ramen mm -hmm. Museum, so many Ooh. weird themed restaurants and hot springs, the self mummified monks mm -hmm. of Sokushin Butsu, that hotel run by robots, the Ninja Museum in Iga, Iga. Kan Manga Fuchi, yeah. Lava Buddhas, the restricted access Ise Grand Ise Shrine, the most uh, significant of all Shinto shrines, the Shirakawa Go, go so traditional bad. village. Shirakawa Go is kind of near from my hometown and it's really beautiful during the fall season armed with water cannons to protect itself from fires, abandoned theme parks like Greenland and Nara Dreamland, hey. Uchiha Hill with Red Cypress, and the national treasure Itsukushima Itsuku Shrine featured on hey. numerous pieces of art, films, and even banknotes. By the way, in Itsukushima Shrine, you'll see this uh, Torii is placed in the water. Do you know why? Because I thought it was so weird when I was a kid. And I found out that it's because the whole island is the shrine. So they put it outside it. And since it's in the water, it kind of moves because of the waves and i thought that was so cool now despite the bustling metropolis regions and skyscrapers japan does an incredible job at maintaining its natural integrity find out how in 
Now, Japan's land is kind of like a gingerbread house. Beautiful on the outside, but potentially dangerous on the inside. First of all, yeah. Japan is a stratovolcanic volcanic archipelago located Earthquake. right on the most precariously situated section it's crazy. where four major tectonic plates converge, the Pacific, the Philippine, the Eurasian, and the North American plates. Of course, this means that not only is Japan subject to earthquakes, but also tsunamis, which by the way is a Japanese word, tsunami, caused from sub-oceanic <laughs> activities such as the one recently in Fukushima caused by the epicenter Obviously. in the Japan Trench off the Pacific. This also means that Japan is a volcanic area with numerous volcanoes still active, like Aogashima, a volcano within a volcano. Mount Aso, mm -hmm. the largest volcanic caldera. This, in return, also blesses Japan with countless natural hot springs, which they like to exploit and build bathhouses on, called onsen, typically indicated with this symbol. All this plate activity in volcanoes means that about 70% of Japan is mountainous, with the highest peak, Mount Fuji, overlooking Tokyo, which, by the way, is still technically an active volcano, which erupted about 300 years ago. The mm -hmm. rift between the Philippine plate and the Eurasian plate creates the Japanese Alps, which bisects the country on Honshu. In this uh, middle area, the Honshu, there are many mountains there, like a beautiful mountain. We have 100 famous mountains in Japan, and most of them are in uh, Japanese Alps, this uh, Honshu where he marked it. It's actually one of my goals to go all 100 mountains before I die. Although I've been in Mount Fuji, and I think that's the most beautiful mountain I've ever seen. My friend said that there are many other mountains in Japan that is like a lot beautiful than Mount Fuji. This isolated geologic war zone in return though kind of blesses Japan with an abundance of unique flora and fauna. Today about 70% mm -hmm. of Japan is forested with nice natural water sources like the longest river, the Shinano, Shinano. and the largest lake, Lake Biwa on Honshu. I think my brother went around Biwa Lake by bike and I don't know how long it took him to finish it, like few days? I'm not sure, but it is that big. Endemic animals can be found like Japanese hornets, makake monkeys, tanukis, giant salamanders, bobtail cat, sero, <laughs> red fox, red crown crane, the national dog, the shiba inu, koi. the national bird, the green pheasant, and the national fish, koi. Speaking of animals, Japan has quite a few feral animal islands and towns, such as Tashirojima, the cat mm, island, I Kuroshima, wanna go there so the bad. Island, the town of Miyajima for deer, Miyagi Zao for foxes, and of course Jigoku Dani, where you can see those monkeys in hot springs. With limited space and only about 20% highly subsidized arable land, Japan has kind of had to think outside the box so they said hey why not go to the sea today japan is disputably the most advanced aquaculture society on the planet not only do they have the largest merchant marine fleet in the world but they also harvest everything from shellfish to seaweed in offshore ocean plots and fish farms they love fish they even have the largest fish market in the world Tsukiji. Tsukiji. speaking of which we all know about japanese uh i think some of them moved to toyosu but there are still many stores in tsukiji so if you want to enjoy eating seafoods you can still go to tsukiji market food. I feel like I don't even really have to give you a list of notable dishes like sushi, mochi, or ramen. However, Japan is known for making strange flavors of conventional Yay. snacks, drinks, and desserts, such oh, as yeah. yogurt Pepsi, spaghetti popsicles, horse and octopus ice mm -hmm. cream, pancake juice, wasp crackers, and Kit Kat oh, has God. tried pretty much anything. Under that exists? Wasp Speaking of which, crackers? Japan is the third largest world Busted. economy by nominal GDP, mostly due to their various technology and automotive Still. industries that have swept over the world by storm since the middle of the 20th century. The largest but the thing is, most uh, car companies in Japan, their sales number is decreasing a lot. I think it's not going to be as good as before. Companies include Toyota, Mitsubishi, Honda, Nissan, Mazda, Suzuki, and Subaru, as well as tech companies and their subsidiaries like Hitachi, Sony, Epson, Canon, Toshiba, Fujitsu, Panasonic, Nikon, and uh -huh. Nintendo. This does, however, cause a problem. Nintendo. Japan is classified as a high throwaway society in which lots of resources get unnecessarily used uh -huh. and tossed. Like, come on, Japan, I know you have aesthetic standards, but seriously, I don't need one apple in vacuum sealed <laughs> plastic wrap. Nonetheless, Japan is often seen as one of, if not the world leader in robotics and tech science, receiving like more either. Nobel Prizes in science than any other Asian country. And it's Kind of impressive. I mean, with a high population and limited space, Japanese people know how to consolidate and innovate. Speaking of Japanese people. Now, Japanese people are like, you never know what they're gonna come up with next. You know it's probably gonna be a little weird, but you're still gonna be a little interested in it. First of all, the country has about 127 million people and is the 10th most populous country in the mm -hmm. world. However, Mexico Even now, really yeah, really it's still the same. Anymore. The country is incredibly homogenous with over 98% of the populace identifying as ethnically Japanese, while the remainder is mostly made up of Koreans, Chinese, and very small Caucasian minorities of Americans and Europeans, and the indigenous Ryukyu and Ainu I like peoples. the background the music. Japanese as their currency, they surprisingly use like the type A American style festival. plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. As mm -hmm. mentioned, like eight seconds ago, Japan has two main indigenous ethnic groups, each with their own languages. You have the Ainu, which predominantly inhabit Hokkaido and some mm. of the Kuril Islands administered by Russia, known for their rustic scruff. Oh, by the way, I made a video about dying languages in Japan. I'll put the card above, so if you're interested in that, I 
highly recommend watching it features where men grew beards and women used to tattoo their Tattooed, lips and yeah. arms. Today there are less than 30,000 left, but some estimate that there could be up to 200,000 if you include the other Ainu that have assimilated into the rest of Japan and are kind of faintly aware of their own culture. Otherwise, you have the Ryukyu people or the Okinawans, which are kind of like the Hawaiians of Japan, known for their own distinct art and traditions so and beliefs. Now, everybody in the world has had at least a little bit of exposure to some kind of Japanese culture, whether it be samurais, geishas, sumos, kabuki, shamisen music, kimonos, and excessively weird products and advertising. <laughs> Kyari Pomu Pomu da. Kyari Pomu Pomu is the Lady Gaga in Japan. I think many people know her. Using non-conformity as a hook to engage viewers. <laughs> but apart from all that flashy Japan stuff, let's look at the basics first. Japan, no surprise, speaks Japanese, which is actually not that hard to learn conversationally, <sighs> but it's a nightmare when it comes to writing. The Japanese language <laughs> uses three alphabets, hiragana, katakana, and kanji. kanji. Technically four if you include romaji, but that's kind of like for mm. lazy people. The first two, hiragana and katakana, are syllabaries made up of 46 corresponding base characters mm -hmm. each. That means you have two ways to write each syllable, mm -hmm. whereas kanji is a list of Chinese characters that they borrowed from China. Most students have to learn about two to Kind of stole thousand. it. <laughs> that means that Chinese people can kind of get by in Japan just by reading the signs, as most of the characters have mm. identical meanings, That's just true. different pronunciations. It's kind of hard to yeah. explain, but the reason why they use three alphabets is because each one kind of plays a role for certain words mm -hmm. in context. They don't use spaces in writing, so each alphabet kind of acts as like word dividers, and katakana is used for technical and foreign words. Well, why don't yeah. they just fix the problem by using spaces and discard the other two alphabets? If you use only two, it will be really hard to read it. For example, niwa ni niwa, niwa tori ga iru. It means there are two chickens in the garden. If you write it in hiragana and katakana, it will be really hard to understand. But historically, we didn't start with three, so before it was two, only kanji and then katakana, and hiragana was added. It's been about 1200 years since we used uh, three of them, all of them, yeah. It's crazy. Shut up! That's why! If you didn't grow up here and actually learn this stuff, you're either obsessed with Japan or criminally insane. Sorry, I'm boring the crap out of you guys with language <laughs> stuff. Anyway, let's talk about history! Now, I'm sure many of you have seen that video by Bill Wirtz, whom I am totally not jealous of, considering that he racked up more <laughs> subscribers in two videos than I have in all these years of working on this channel, but Well, you know, he really deserves it. First of all, I'm very grateful for that video because it gave me a chance to talk more about our culture and my previous reaction video. Yes, I made a reaction video in it. Second of all, I am surprised on how much work he put in this video. He really did his own research and the way he edits it, it's so fun. I think he made a really good job. I love it. But in the quickest way I can summarize it, Yayoi period, Kofun period, Yamato's Unite Japan, Asuka regime, Chinese culture comes in, Heian period, aristocrats take over, Kamakura period, aristocrats lose, Shogun time, province wars, Azuchi Momoyama period, things are stable, Meiji restoration, <laughs> industrialization, World War I, Japan's economy sucks, coup d'etats and assassination attempts against the emperor, military rule, they try to make an empire and in World War II attack Pearl Harbor, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, afterwards treaties signed, military kind of dismantled, and post-war economic miracle, done! Japan definitely sticks Damn out it. from every country on earth and it's part no, of the no. belief system. Japan is the only country in the world that practices Shintoism, which mm -hmm. obviously enough started in Japan. If you don't know anything about Shintoism, basically it's a very ritualistic belief system that reveres a multitude of kami, which translates to something along the lines of gods or spirits or essence. It's hard to explain, uh -huh. but basically- That's called Yao Yorozu no Kami. It's a belief that there's gods in everything. There are kami for harvest, kami for war, kami for mm -hmm. good luck, and so on. Today, about 80% of Japanese people practice Shinto to some extent, whether it be going to temples or shrines and lighting incense and praying. However, most yeah. of them will not say that they identify as Shintoists. Oh, by the way, when you make a wish in a shrine, like after you toss that coins, you have to actually introduce yourself and say your address. Well, you don't have to say it out loud, like you can say it in your mind. I know it's kind of weird, but I started doing that lately. Since there are no formal rituals to deem yourself a practitioner. Otherwise, about 35% might say that they identify as Buddhist and a small 3% are Christians. Today, there are about 81,000 Shinto shrines and about 85,000 appointed mm -hmm. Shinto priests all over the country. Technically, Shintoism is also important because it's claimed that the emperor is a direct descendant of Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun, which means the emperor has the highest authority in Shintoism. Mm -hmm. Though today, it's more seen as like a moral tradition and patriotic practice rather than believing that the emperor actually has divine status. Oh yeah, and Japan has an imperial family with Akihito. The new emperor's name is Naruhito-sama, 
and his wife is Masako Sama. Only country with an emperor. Some people will say that Shintoism is partially the reason why Japan also has a vibrant, complex industry of cartoons and anime, hey. many of which inspired from Shinto driven legends and kami. They often rank as the top video game producing and playing country in the world. Everybody knows Mario, Sonic, and Pikachu. Mm -hmm. In a sense, Japanese people have always admittedly kind of been escapists, creating their own worlds, and it might be due to their long history of diplomatic isolation. In another sense, though, mm -hmm. honor and diligence culture is of huge importance. Having a degree and respectable title is always flaunted. The problem, though, is that Japan has the largest aging population in the world in which over 26% of the country is 65 yes. or older. In contrast, Sadly. only about 12.4% are 1 to 14 years old. Sociologists mm -hmm. have many theories as to why this is, but in addition to a high depression rate, there seems to be a lack of sexual interest amongst millennials, especially for men. They even have a I don't really know if that's the main reason, but when the Japanese government saw this problem around 70s, 1970s, they didn't do anything. They didn't solve the problem. They were not really interested. I think that's also one of the main reason why it got worse. I think Japan can learn a lot from France on how they solve this problem word for it, so shoku danshi, or herbivores. On top of that, Japan has a very strict and conservative approach towards immigration and citizenship. So ultimately, yeah, a true. smaller generation has to lift the burden of taking care of a population almost we 10 times their size. Any Japanese people. people are overworked, they even have a word for that, karoshi. Some wonder how the future yeah. will look like. Hey son, can you help me cross the street? Ooh, I would, but you never had a son, so I don't exist. <laughs> Good luck! Now you can probably understand why the Japanese are so into building robots. There's so much more we could talk about, like how Japan has a strong history in martial arts, folklore, and regional festivals, but this video is already getting long and I have to cut it down. By the way, have you ever imagined what would happen to Japan if this keeps decreasing? For me, it is a really big problem. There will be less competition. There will be less smart people, scientists, doctors, uh, athletes. More schools will shut down in Japan, which is already happening now. That also means it will get a lot easier to pass an entrance exam in like, you know, famous universities like Tokyo University. They will have to gradually lower their standards and I don't know, maybe like in a few decades, like Japan is part of other country. I hope it doesn't happen though. <laughs> and I hope Japanese government can do more for the women, for them to be able to have both a career and a family. Because right now in Japan, it's still hard to do that. And that's also why many women uh, choose career over, you know, getting married or having kids. Notable people of Japanese descent yeah. might include people like Emperor Hirohito, Fukuzawa Yukichi, Honda Tatakatsu, like Kukai, Maeda Toshie, Tokugawa Leyasu, Murasaki Yasu. Shikibu, Saifo Takamori, Akira Kurosawa, Hayao mm -hmm. Miyazaki, Soichiro Honda, Miyoshi Umeki, Hibari Misora, Rinko Misora Kikuchi, da. Samu Danzai, Kei Nishikori, Ayumi That's Hamasaki, right. Takeshi Hitano, Masayoshi Son, Akira Toriyama, mm -hmm. Sadako Ogata, Kaiho Koki, Sako Katsura, like Ichiro Suzuki, Hane Mori, Ken Watanabe, Downtown Duo, Kisuke Honda, and Shinji Kagawa. Now, due to their history, Shinji Kagawa is cute. Lone wolf, but over time, they learned how to open but up. But he already Let's retired, find out right? How in the last segment, the. <laughs> So Japan is a pretty big player on the world stage. As a member of the G20, G8, IMF, WHO, UN, EAS, Interpol, and like 400 other acronyms, they know diplomacy pretty well. They get along with Brazil, Peru, and the Philippines pretty well, as each country contains many Japanese communities. And in addition, lots of people from these countries either visit or work in Japan. Peru even had a Japanese president. As mentioned in the France episode, Japan kind of sees France as like the epitome of European exoticism. And after English, French is one of the most highly desired languages to learn. Although good luck considering how every really? French work. I didn't know the that. Continent. The Pacific Island nations of Palau, Kiribati, and Marshall Islands still hold close ties, even though Japan kind of occupied them during the first half of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Japanese people love visiting and provide business and revenue for these countries. Their biggest frenemies are South Korea and China. These it's a love and hate relationship, I think, but they all have many things in common, such as being... Uh, one of the most uh, intelligent countries in the world, yeah. Three are like the Asian trifecta, dominating most of the business and affairs in the East. Despite Japan having invaded and occupying mm. these two for decades, my own grandmother was actually raised in Japanese-occupied Korea, and to this day, she still speaks fluent Japanese. They've mostly moved on, Hi, plus grandma. the whole North Korea thing kind of makes South Korea and Japan closer. The youth of today love piggybacking off of each other's cultures. Koreans and Japanese yeah, admit it they can't get enough of Japanese that, anime you know, and video games, whereas the Japanese are obsessed with K-pop, and you know, as well. they kind of got kanji and Buddhism from China, so 
so uh, there's that. In terms of their best friends, however, interestingly enough though, most of the Japanese people I've talked to have said the USA and Taiwan. Even though they don't officially recognize Taiwan as a sovereign state on paper, they totally act like they do and stand with them on pretty much any diplomatic. I'm going to Taiwan, Taiwan someday. Hopefully Japanese this year. Empire years, and they have since then it's still one of my dreams. Even though the pains of World War II will never be forgotten, it's funny because mm -hmm. almost immediately after that, the US and Japan started skipping down the street hand in hand. The US kind of felt like a duty to make reparations since they were already communities of Japanese Americans, especially in Hawaii and California. My hometown, Yay, Los Angeles, Hawaii, got a little Tokyo. So they invested mm -hmm. tons of money in Japan after the war, and in the 50s, Japan started booming in every industry. Culture cues were adopted on both sides. Donald's opened up in Tokyo, 7 Eleven opened up in the US. They mm -hmm. love burgers and Chris Evans, and we have nerds living in their mom's basements rewatching every Evans. season of Naruto Shippuden with ill fitting cosplay outfits. <laughs> in conclusion, the land of the rising sun has always kind of figured that the best That's way for them funny. to open up to the world was to create their own worlds with wild imaginations driven mm -hmm. by technology, yet still beautifully preserving the ancient, vibrant values of their ancestors. Next. Thank you so much, Barb Sun. That was a nice video. I enjoyed it a lot. It's really funny, goofy, and informative. I had so much fun. I will have to subscribe to his channel. It's very interesting. Well, I hope you enjoy watching this video with me. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I post a video every single week. Join our channel membership today to get access to all the perks. Also, please give a follow to our shop Instagram at Arta Asharika. Until next time, miyuki deshita. Mata ne!